Welcome to the Bible in One Year with Melissa Sykes. Today is November 2nd. Jesus often faced hostility when he was in people's homes, including the homes of tax collectors and sinners, the homes of friends, see John chapter 12, verses 4 through 5, and the homes of Pharisees, see Luke chapter 7, verses 44 through 46. The hostility that Jesus experiences in the home of the high priest, however, far exceeds these other ill treatments. Here his feet certainly won't be washed. He is on trial where he is falsely accused, spit upon, beaten, and blindfolded for sport, all done illegally during the night. Meanwhile, Peter, who is waiting in the courtyard, does just as Jesus and Isaiah predicted. Mark chapter 14, verses 29 through 30, and also see Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3. Having humiliated the Son of God, the religious leaders bind Jesus as if he were a threat and take him before Pilate for the next stage of humiliation. Judas, having done his part in their plans, is disposable. They have what they want, and they believe that their leadership position in Jerusalem remains intact. Jesus before the council, Mark chapter 14, verses 53 through 65. They took Jesus to the high priest home where the leading priests, the elders, and the teachers of religious law had gathered. Meanwhile, Peter followed him at a distance and went right into the high priest's courtyard. There he sat with the guards, warming himself by the fire. Inside, the leading priests and the entire high council were trying to find evidence against Jesus so they could put him to death, but they couldn't find any. Many false witnesses spoke against him, but they contradicted each other. Finally, some men stood up and gave this false testimony. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with human hands, and in three days I will build another made without human hands. But even then, they didn't get their story straight. Then the high priest stood up before the others and asked Jesus, Well, aren't you going to answer these charges? What do you have to say for yourself? But Jesus was silent and made no reply. Then the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated in the place of power at God's right hand and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothing to show his horror and said, Why do we need other witnesses? You have all heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? Guilty, they all all cried. He deserves to die. Then some of them began to spit on him, and they blindfolded him and beat him with their fists. Prophesy to us, they jeered, and the guards slapped him as they took him away. Matthew chapter 26, verses 57 through 68. Then the people who had arrested Jesus led him to the home of Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of religious law and the elders had gathered. Meanwhile, Peter followed him at a distance and came to the high priest's courtyard. He went in and sat with the guards and waited to see how it would all end. Inside, the leading priests and the entire high council were trying to find witnesses who would lie about Jesus so they could put him to death. But even though they found many who agreed to give false witness, they could not use anyone's testimony. Finally, two men came forward who declared, This man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Well, aren't you going to answer these charges? What do you have to say for yourself? But Jesus remained silent. Then the high priest said to him, I demand in the name of the living God, tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus replied, You have said it, and in the future you will see the Son of Man seated in the place of power at God's right hand and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothing to show his horror and said, Blasphemy! Why do we need other witnesses? You have all heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? Guilty, they shouted. He deserves to die. Then they began to spit in Jesus' face and beat him with their fists, and some slapped him, jeering, Prophesy to us, you Messiah, who hit you that time? Peter denies Jesus. Mark chapter 14, verses 66 through 72. Meanwhile, Peter was in the courtyard below. One of the servant girls who worked for the high priest came by and noticed Peter warming himself at the fire. She looked at him closely and said, You were one of those with Jesus of Nazareth. But Peter denied it. I don't know what you're talking about, he said, and he went out into the entryway. Just then, a rooster crowed. When the servant girl saw him standing there, she began telling the others, This man is definitely one of them. But Peter denied it again. A little later, some of the other bystanders confronted Peter and said, You must be one of them because you are a Galilean. Peter swore. 
a curse on me if I'm lying. I don't know this man you're talking about. And immediately the rooster crowed the second time. Suddenly Jesus' words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times that you even know me. And he broke down and wept. Matthew chapter 26 verses 69 through 75. Meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came over and said to him, You were one of those with Jesus the Galilean. But Peter denied it in front of everyone. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Later, out by the gate, another servant girl noticed him and said to those standing around, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, Peter denied it, this time with an oath. I don't even know the man, he said. A little later, some of the other bystanders came over to Peter and said, You must be one of them. We can tell by your Galilean accent. Peter swore, A curse on me if I'm lying. I don't know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. Suddenly Jesus' words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. And he went away weeping bitterly. Luke chapter 22 verses 54 through 62. So they arrested him and led him to the high priest's home, and Peter followed at a distance. The guards lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it, and Peter joined them there. A servant girl noticed him in the firelight and began staring at him. Finally, she said, This man was one of Jesus' followers. But Peter denied it. Woman, he said, I don't even know him. After a while, someone else looked at him and said, You must be one of them. No, man, I'm not, Peter retorted. About an hour later, someone else insisted, This must be one of them, because he is a Galilean too. But Peter said, Man, I don't know what you are talking about. And immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. At that moment, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Suddenly, the Lord's words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. And Peter left the courtyard, weeping bitterly. John chapter 18, verses 25 through 27. Meanwhile, as Simon Peter was standing by the fire warming himself, they asked him again, You're not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it, saying, No, I am not. But one of the household slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Didn't I see you out there in the olive grove with Jesus? Again, Peter denied it, and immediately a rooster crowed. Jesus before the council, Mark chapter 15, verse 1. Very early in the morning, the leading priests, the elders, and the teachers of religious law, the entire high council, met to discuss their next step. They bound Jesus, led him away, and took him to Pilate, the Roman governor. Matthew 27, verses 1 through 2. Very early in the morning, the leading priests and the elders of the people met again to lay plans for putting Jesus to death. Then they bound him, led him away, and took him to Pilate, the Roman governor. Luke chapter 22, verses 66 through 71. At daybreak, all the elders of the people assembled, including the leading priests and the teachers of religious law. Jesus was led before his, this high council, and they said, Tell us, are you the Messiah? But he replied, If I tell you, you won't believe me, and if I ask you a question, you won't answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated in the place of power at God's right hand. They all shouted, So are you claiming to be the Son of God? And he replied, You say that I am. Why do we need other witnesses, they said. We ourselves heard him say it. Judas hangs himself. Matthew chapter 27, verses 3 through 10. When Judas, who had betrayed him, realized that Jesus had been condemned to die, he was filled with remorse. So he took the 30 pieces of silver back to the leading priests and the elders. I have sinned, he declared, for I have betrayed an innocent man. What do we care, they retorted. That's your problem. Then Judas threw the silver coins down in the temple and went out and hanged himself. The leading priest picked up the coins. It wouldn't be right to put this money in the temple treasury, they said, since it was payment for murder. After some discussion, they finally decided to buy the potter's field, and they made it into a cemetery for foreigners. That is why the field is still called the field of blood. This fulfilled the prophecy of Jeremiah that says, They took the thirty pieces of silver, the price at which he was valued by the people of Israel, and purchased the potter's field, as the Lord directed.